As solo players, the bases that we build vary in size, shape, design, and really, protectability. Now, today, me and Twisted have something a little bit different. I know you'd be looking for something more like a survival series from me, but today I wanted to bring you some tips and tricks to protect your loot and keep it safe. Now, this right here is your boy's go-to design. This is your standard 2x2. Two two. While easy to set up and very rarely used, it does not provide all that sort of protection. With limited adaptability and very, very small innovation room, it can get very, very stale, tedious, and boring for you to continue living in one of these bases. So today, let's have a look at some ways to protect that beloved TC. Oh, and some boxes too, why not? So guys, what you will see here is me placing myself a TC and a, lot, and a small box in the perfect position. Now what you want to be aiming for is around about four of those little segments of the metal flooring across and you just lay them down as such. Now the beauty of this and the way that we're going to protect them today is with the use of a roof piece. Now basically what you see there is the two by one sort of foundation that we're in. That second, that back one is going to be your panic room, your lock room if you will. As you can see here, dropped the wall piece everything's hidden away behind it. Now what we're going to do is upgrade that just so you can see nice and easily and making sure that the base is going to be as secure as possible and you still got access to your TC and your small box. Now the beauty of this guys and the reason that it is going to be unlootable you are going to see in this video. This is one of the most OP things for solo players and I hope you guys enjoy. Right, so if you go up to that TC you can see it there right? Yep. But you put a box for it. See if you just look at it just slowly move down Oh yeah, yep, so... Right, so, right, I made this metal just because I can't be asked fucking fixing it when you fucking break through it. Okay. Right, so the principle is, you'd have a box, say like, there, cover it, so you okay. wouldn't see it, or some sort of shit, so you break it. See, you do see it, just destroy it, thinking, oh yeah, I'm going to destroy that and take the, take the, the place. So more bullets than normal anyway. Yeah, but you... you then you're stuck with you don't have anything. So you can't you can't you can't access it because it's falling the other side of. So if you fly in there now, I'll make it easier for you. It so in there. So it falls into this ex what would be external honeycomb, I suppose. Yeah, basically. So no one gets fuck all. So the it's the biggest cock ever. However, if you do this, come at this one. Ta da! You got fucking boxes in here in a bag. Yeah, so you fly through here. Shit. Let's carry out the same fucking thing. Fucking hell. Let's just mail that up because I'm really lazy. So four indents in. Yeah, just before the fourth one. So I'll do a roundup summary at the end of the video, but essentially what this does here, when you're, when you're using a MT49 AK, anything like that, which can produces a consistent rapid burst fire of explosive rounds, there is a 50-50 chance that the drop of the box is actually going to fall on this near side or on the far side. Now, this is, I would suggest, a worry, obviously because this base is designed for solo players early in the wipe. So what you want to be doing is making sure you do not, obviously you upgrade your base and stuff, don't rely on this late into wipe when people have got rockets and this sort of stuff. Because obviously, if people want in, they'll get in. But basically, if you do use an M249, the consistent rate of fire basically results in a 50-50 drop of the large boxes. The TC will 100% every time drop out on the in the drop room, in the panic room. Um, it's the sort of large boxes that cause the trouble. Now the small boxes as well, the small boxes and the TC are both 100% unlootable sort of designs. They will both drop in your panic room. The large boxes, because they have different hit colliders, get a little bit more tricky but as you can see here twist is just dropping the two down right now and i'd just like to say take this opportunity to say massive thank you to twist check his channel out down below in the description please i beg you he has so much shit there that side that side nice yeah. okay now, so the thing i think if you keep continuous to find out it it will fall, it might fall down the other side well, I mean, to I be fair, how many hey, how many people for these sort of bases that we're going for here are going to have M249s? How many people are going to have the fucking ammo to shoot at it? Exactly. And how many people are actually going to know they're there if you hide it behind a nice box or something? Now, I'll show you what I've done over here. Oh, fucking hell. So, this is the concept that I come up with. Okay. So, Solo base. the M2 TC, yep. 23 satchels. 
to get into the box upstairs, 23 satchels. Jesus. Plus, you get five doors as well to go through. Then to get this one, another 23 satchels. Shit, oh, that box behind there. Yeah, box behind there. Do you see behind that one? Ah, oh, I see yeah. it, okay. Then you come up here. Then up here, we have another box behind that one as well. Fuck. So if you metal it on the outside... It well, worked out 23, 46, 69... 69 on satchels if you want to get all yeah. of the boxes. Plus the doors. Plus the doors. You could drive people crazy trying to work out where your TC is in bases like this. Yeah. You and put I guess... it like that, and somebody just thinks it's a really shit lit room. It's the Less upkeep. than a thousand each. Less than a thousand each, that's crazy. <laughs> eight, not less than nine hundred metal frags a day. Less than uh, six hundred. Yeah, don't get me wrong. It's eight. Ro it's fucking eight rockets. But you're obviously gonna build up on it. Well, this is the thing. This the idea of this is to help sort of solo it, players, but like also it. yeah. It's, I mean that you can that farm the right. resources for that pretty oh, goddamn mate. easily. Do you want me to tell you what the cost is for that base? Yeah. So that's what you're looking at in terms of this base. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, that's nothing in the grand scheme of things. Like, the metal doesn't even need to go to metal. You could have it a stone short term. Yeah. As I say, if you guys are after any sort of base exploits, building tips, everything in that sort of ilk and genre, I seriously advise you check out Twist's channel. It's linked down below in the description. I'll drop it in the comments as well so you guys can see it. He has a plethora of things you can use in there. But anyway, what you're looking at here, if you place the box this way around, right, so the small end is facing you, it's going to drop outside of your panic room. If you drop it the other way, it'll drop inside. This is because the gate, Behelk had to get round um, a different exploit on unlootable loot rooms previously, and I think he's made it so that they'll always drop towards the short edge. So this is your sort of honeycomb aspect that you'd go for. So this is your starter base here. Done like this. This is your starter base. That's you very true. Fucking one. Yeah. Once you're done. Then I'm, I'm going off for the night, I'll be extending my base. Put that in place. That's the honest. An extremely viable fucking option. It's an incredibly viable option for hiding your loot. Whether it, If you've got a 50-50 chance of it dropping this side that the raider doesn't get it, or this yeah. side that the raider does, but if you hide it well enough, it's it, it's it's it doesn't matter. It's a moot point because the raider won't exactly. see it. Breaks on this side. Yeah. I think it's explosive ammo because what pulls it forward? So it's obviously like you say, it's the continuous fire of explosive ammo yeah. that pulls it forward. However, it does yeah. take like two hundred odd explosive rounds because you're not hitting it direct. Yeah. Now, much like the. Um, unlootable like you know through the bus stop bases yeah the fire of the flame arrows does hit it through the mm -hmm. through the roof piece so it will damage them quickly however if you do it like that it falls on this side so you're yeah. fucking absolutely golden so i've asked twist to show us a few base designs that he thinks would be best for using this sort of style this sort of unlootable loot room and that's the thing it's unlootable never nothing in rust is unraidable but obviously it is unlootable if you lock the tc lock the lock the boxes people won't be able to get at them from underneath the roof piece and then they drop into your panic room you have a bag in there whatever even if you don't it's kind of like i guess you kamikaze them you make sure the raider doesn't get your loot um it's a crazy exploit but anyway yeah so this is a nice little base design that he's come up with super simple super easy super low cost much like that other base we've already looked at this is a perfect one for your sort of wipe day sort of starter base you'd start in one of these corners modular and just expand about it it's all about expansion for me i love a base that i don't have to build a whole separate one when i get enough loot i love being able to expand and make my small home a little bit bigger so as you can see here you've got the opportunity in this design for two of these like roof piece exploits I guess that's, I don't really know what they're called, but anyway, make sure you're shooting, like I said earlier, for the four pieces across into the metal sort of floor piece. That's what Twist is using right now to measure, and then he will drop the TC, and then it's nice, he can secure it away in that triangle piece of airlock. Now, obviously what you want to be doing is metalling up the walls, etc, etc, making this base as hard to raid as possible. You do remember it is only one, it is still one wall to the outside in this design sort of thing, but that's still like 23 odd satchels, like, it is kind of kind of insane it really is but anyway make sure that the tc is nice and securely hidden under there you can hide it up and cover it up with whatever you want furnaces boxes i don't know what else you, i mean use your freaking imagination this is the thing once this load goes live and people start using this and everything like that always always i think every base builder i don't do them personally but every base builder i think says always adapt the designs to your own making and style because everyone will see these videos everyone will change them and then you're just gonna get 
fall into that trap really, but anyway, these two large boxes are being used to cover up this large box hidden behind this wall piece, as you can see here. You can't see that, I wouldn't be able to see that. If I hadn't seen this video, I have no idea. I think it was just extra honeycombing, the, uh, the roof piece is being used as extra honeycomb I think, so anyway, different styles for different people. But Twist is just going to now drop a door piece, as you can see, and then a, la a double door on there opening outwards will reduce a produce one of those single door airlocks basically. Nice and easy look, and you can't get through that gap. Then always make sure guys that obviously what you're going to be doing is upgrading this base. As you go, stone is sufficient but very easily raidable for someone with a bit of determination. Always make it metal. If you're not making your bases metal, you're missing out because it just triples the sort of cotton, it doesn't triple it. It over doubles the cost of using satchel charges, so I seriously advise it. If you've got the resources obviously, but I think this is all very, very in the realms of a solo player sort of style for sure. And for those of you who love a good bunker base, do not forget, do not think that I forgot about you. I also asked Twist to produce what he thought could be a nice, simple, easy, low cost bunker base option for those solo players that do love it. Love it. Now, what I would say is this one is, well, well honeycombed, I must admit. Bunker bases to me do prove, while sometimes great, rather redundant, because obviously even though you're sort of living that downstairs area, they don't have all that more extra protection, but anyway, this this bunker base here has a nice entrance, exit way, and produces the use of the roof, sort of lootable, really. A nice floor plan and a good sort of effort for you guys. Alright guys, so this is a little breakdown and a little rundown of the, the methods involved in how I think probably best you can utilise this sort of ethos. So, right here is the TC covered up behind your sleeping bag and a large box. So you pick that large box up, as you can see the TC is currently hidden behind this. Now obviously what you would have is this sort of thing metalled up, just making sure that it's nice and difficult for raiders to get in on and get your sort of TC behind there. Now obviously what you've got is that in there. Now there's obviously two sort of ways to destroy this, either with um, the M249, but as we've seen, and I shall show you some sort of footage, I've probably, if I've not shown you it already, basically it takes hundreds and hundreds of rounds to be able to destroy stuff through this. Basically, the what I would suggest is your, your main sort of worry would be fire arrows, okay? But the beauty of this sort of design, with the TCs at, at least 100%, you're guaranteed that the TC drop box, when it loses its little bag after it's destroyed, will land above the wall piece. So you, all you need to do is lock that wall piece off and you are fucking golden. As you can see the flames are hurting the TC and somebody can raid it, however, when we get down to the bottom, as you can see the metal frags inside because I've destroyed the little bag have landed above the wall. This method of hiding the TC for solo players guys is actually going to be pretty damn insane. Obviously the big thing here is that the base design isn't designed to sustain the whole wipe. This is not a sort of method I would advise using for the whole wipe, more so for the fact that you'll have the opportunity to hide your loot short term for minimal sort of cost. Now obviously behind these two boxes you can't see it, it's hidden away, you've got yourself another couple of boxes. Obviously all you need to do is look down until you grab that hitbox on those large boxes, store your loot inside, and you're fucking golden and away. Now, the big thing with these boxes, as I might have already shown, when used with continual rapid fire, we have found that sometimes there is a probability that the boxes will drop on this side, because basically, in order to get around some other exploit, game breaking exploit, I think what Helk's done is made it so the ends of these boxes fall towards you. However, that's what happens when there's continual rapid fire using things such as M249s, AKs, etc. It takes a sugar ton of explosive rounds and, to be honest, very little return. If you're using this as a solo player and a small solo base, no one's going to do it, let's be honest. 100% the box will drop on the inside. Now that's what we're calling it, I know it's not unraidable, nothing in Rust is unraidable, alright? However, what you're going to get is that people have got to then expunge a shit ton more resources to get into your sort of, I guess, panic room if you will. You can fit a bag in this one on a square foundation, two boxes in here, get yourself, get your loot hidden, metal this all up, you are fucking golden. Alright guys, and that brings us to the end of this, my first ever real base building exploit video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. Let me know down below what you think about this. I know a lot of people, when um, if you're using this already and I've brought it to the, everyone's attention, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry if it gets patched, but 
Um, use it, guys. Solo players especially. It groups as well. It's tricky to use. It's it's good. It's going to be a bit of a game-breaking game one. They might patch it soon, I don't know. But if you're solo players, I seriously advise it. I'm going to be using it this wipe, um, and I'm going to be using one of these base designs that Twist to come up with. And again, a, a special thank you to Twist for bringing this to my attention and helping me out. Guys, go and check out his video. He's going to be producing a couple of videos on this as well, showing you some different base designs you can use, um, and some different styles that you might be able to merge into this to make this even freaking better. His channel's linked down below. Check it out. He's got loads of shit over there. But yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in a, on Friday for a survival video, the last episode of the current series. So thank you very much for watching. Have a great day, a great week, and I'll see you soon. Peace. Red sky, reach up for so, so high.